Hey everyone and welcome to another modding spotlight, this time featuring more from the Sunken World editions. The Sunken World being an oceanic themed map from Ark Survival Evolved which will be making its way into Ark Ascended and until then they are adding in more and more of their dinosaurs from Evolved over to Ascended and some updated to better fit the new ASA design. And thus for this spotlight I'm checking out the Henodus, which is a turtle like creature actually rated to the pleasing saw and it is meant to be a very early game accessible tain that will allow you to actually build underwater and use it like a raft without incurring the raft of the lead Sixthus. Which I gotta admit already sounds like a really handy thing to have. Now in terms of finding the Hinodus, as you can see they are very common and I find them pretty much everywhere around rivers throughout the entire island map. And since having the mod installed for the Amblocetus and the Anomalicarus, and watching my friends play with it as well, we have seen Hinoda spawn everywhere, so it is a nice early game creature. It will not take you long to find it, so long as you're looking around the rivers. And I imagine beaches as well, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. Now, despite being primarily underwater, they thankfully do often have fairly vibrant gels and are just generally quite easy to spot. And they do sometimes, as you've seen there, get attacked by large carnivores, so you might want to be a bit careful, but otherwise, again, they're not too hard to find. There's this cool looking level 100 one here, fantastic. And as you can see on the map, this is really quite close to one of the initial starting spawn zones. I've also tested, and you can begin taming these as early as level 1. They require berries or regular kibble. So, for this, uh, what are you doing? For this level 100, in terms of measure very taming, it's actually really pretty good. I mean, it's better than, you know, Mesopithecus or Gigantopithecus. Some of the other passive berry tames are a bit annoying. This guy's nice and chill. And while we're waiting for the cooldown, he do be having a very cool looking model. Hold on. <laughs> I love the face. It kind of reminds me a little bit of some dragon turtles in other games like World of Warcraft. Not entirely alike, but it does remind me. It makes me think of it. Oh, those eyes are a little bit scary. I do believe that they are doing visual touch-ups to a few of their creatures, such as the Amblocetus, which I'm very much looking forward to. That way to bring it more in line with the ASA. But yeah, for this guy, it's definitely going to be all about the utility, and I'm really excited to give that a go. And I wonder, can I stand... Oh god. Can I stand on a wild one? Let's just, you know, harass it a little bit. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, we're just vibing. So, good old Crystal Wyvern Taming, if you're familiar with that. Just sit back on his back and wait. Now for the Hinodas, I have actually been told by my friends that the only hard about about taming these is that they are very prone to getting attacked by wild creatures, in particular seagulls. Or maybe it's more like the seagulls cleave onto the player and then hit the Hinodas, but either way it resets taming. So there really is probably the one thing you want to be cautious about is just keeping an eye on the environment around you. I guess really like any other passive tame. Oh, although they are fast swimmers. Oh, this is absolutely chill. I like this, but I can definitely see why I'd be concerned when you're mid-taming and something, you know, it just swims over to something aggressive. Like <laughs> that Rex over there, for example, that'd be a little bit, uh, a little bit unfortunate. Oh yeah, but he do be taking me on a bit of a journey, doesn't he? <laughs> this really is super chill though, just actually gliding across the surface of the river, just chilling, <laughs> enjoying the ride. <laughs> There's not enough creatures in this game that really facilitate that kind of uh, hitchhiking, if you will. Ah, but you know what? I do see some raptors over there, and I'm not going to risk that. Now, obviously, you know, in the early game, you're not going to have access to a pump action. But since I've got it here, I may as well. Oh, I think a piranha just cleaved it, but it is also ready for food now. Okay, kibble makes a massive difference. But I'm pretty sure a piranha did just cleave me, so you definitely want to be wary of that then. Well, thankfully... Oh, that's slow. 100% though. That's nice. So unfortunately, it turns out that the bites in general do just take a while regardless, and I'm getting very worried about that Kano over there, so I'm just going to go ahead and do all that. But yeah, so every bite does take a while, so I would highly recommend trying to go for Kibble if you can. You could tame this super duper early game if you're patient enough for berries, or if it's a very low level one, it might be worthwhile. But otherwise, definitely do try to get that regular Kibble. Okay, so I've timed it, and it's taken five minutes between feeds. And that is the team done. <laughs> so I was just tab down the final feed, went really quickly because I wasn't paying attention. But I did notice a seagull shadow loom over me, and that made me panic. Oh, and you can see 
A raptor just spawned over there, so really anything could have gone wrong while I was tapped out doing other things, timing the feeds and just AFKing on its back. But in the end, it worked out, it worked out. I can see why my, why my friends uh, had a hard time with, you know, these because you want to tap out, you want to just relax while you wait for the five minute feeds, but uh, oh, anything could go wrong. So, you may have instantly noticed I'm riding it without a saddle. No saddle required for the Hinodus. And we've already seen its movement speed. It's really nice and fast in the water. Stamina is draining fast as I sprint. Well, not really, actually, compared to other creatures. Hold on. Stats. It's got 6,000 health. It's got 728 stamina. It's got 900 weight, which is pretty decent. So this is the walk speed for the Hinodas, which immediately you can see is faster than the piranhas currently chasing me. And turn radius is good. It's got, it's got a bit of a turn radius, but I guess it makes sense for such a large creature. Can it go backwards? It kind of can. Oh, hold on. Oh, but you do want to be worried. You do want to worry about piranhas though. Oh, ooh. This, this isn't, this is not a very appealing start. Oh God, I am stuck. Oh, here we go. And we go around and we, you know, deal them head on. Okay, so ability wise, they can only do a left click. Yeah, right, just a bite. You might want to worry about piranhas. I guess the plus side is that I can just escape onto land, but uh, that's kind of scary, you know? Spend a lot of time, spend 15 minutes taming it, only for it to then uh, get eaten by piranhas. Okay, they do very little damage. They do fast attack speed, actually. That's very quick attack speed. Doesn't harvest. Does it harvest anything? Out of curiosity. Oh! Well. That's unexpected, so it's a thatch gatherer, it gets berries and such. So I can harvest the basics that you would need in the early game. So you could get it as a berry gatherer if you really wanted. It's an option, I respect it. But of course, the main selling point of the Hinodus is what it can actually do in the ocean, and it's meant to be a raft. It just acts like a raft, and clearly a much faster one, I should add. So. Uh, I'm glad to cheat because I don't have any structures on me, so let's just go ahead then and enable GCM and let's get some... Let's try some wooden structures for this. So if I were to put down some foundations... Oh, it does embed quite deep in, doesn't it? So it's how to do all of that. Got like a bit of a bigger platform there. And let's say I was to put down some ceilings too. So we can enable a lot of coverage on this. So I do believe that my settings are absolute default when it comes to platform building. So I don't have like any extensions, anything big, bonus or extra. Uh, I'm sure if I made it, you know, more symmetrical or symmetrized at the center of the creature, I could probably build more. So that is the kind of shape that we're looking at, which is a little bit weird. Okay, look, I never claimed to be a builder. That's why I got Loki to build my big special castle base instead of doing it myself. But here's something to begin with. And I'm just curious then. So can I just go straight under? Oh, I can bring my RG down. I, I think, I don't think that's supposed to be the case. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, there you go. Okay. I think that was just an arc moment. We're just gonna forget about that. So. Here is the Hinodus, it certainly does work like a raft, and as mentioned earlier, these are totally ignored by the lead Sixthus. So leads will not be attacking me. Oh, it's even got like a bit of uh, bioluminescence. Oh, look at you. Absolute cutie. Though it is scarily dark down here, but if you did notice, I can go up and down very, very quickly. So this does really make for like a nice early game sea creature. Oh goodness me, it's just, it's very, very dark down here, isn't it? Oh, but I am not being, okay, well, auction's obviously a concern, but I'm not being aggroed to by the mantas, and I've noticed, you know, no sharks yet either. Uh, so this actually would be really, really nice then. Now then, the main thing is that these guys are supposed to be able to burrow down onto the surface of the sea, so ground isn't flat. Oh, wait. There you go. So I right clicked next to a fairly flat-ish surface. And yeah, my, my auction has been refilled. Oh, cool, okay. So now over here, you know, as you'd expect, I need to breathe, you know, I'm lacking. Oh, actually, hold on, say that again. Okay, yeah, I am slowly draining. If I swim above, it is immediately refilled. Come back down again. 
Oh no, this is cute. Hold on. This is actually kind of adorable. Sure, I just buried half of my structures under the mesh, but that's actually really adorable. So, obviously there's gravity, or a lack of gravity, excuse me. Obviously, so it's not going to be like the Shasasaurus, the way we think it's going to be sorted. So there's still gravity in this, but you can just pop in and out, which is really nice. I do wonder if sea creatures can come in here, because technically I am underwater, but I'm also technically breathing at the same time. Uh, oh, speaking of, uh, yeah, didn't think so. Yeah, makes sense. Hino just doesn't have oxygen either. Good. That would have been awful if it did. Oh no, this is actually really nice. This is, this is refreshing. I've always said, um, I've been saying this for a long time, especially with the Anomalocarus from Garuga. That, <laughs> that it would be lovely if, you know, the ability to have, um, if the ability to have sea structures wasn't locked behind tech. I've never liked that. I thought of the fact that these things are behind tech was just stupid. I mean, I get it, you know, it's a nice advanced thing, but it means the entire ocean content is just, you know, you can't really live there, can you? Interesting. It broke aggro. It totally broke aggro and they don't care about the Hinodus. What about if the Hinoda is actually, you know, up and about? Can I detect you then? Or can the sharks detect it? Will they aggro naturally? Are they natural predators? Uh, oh, yes they are. It is aggroing. You can see it coming over. But if I just quickly swim to the bottom again, bury my way away. Yeah, it's breaking the wood and I chose wood on purpose, by the way. So this was an intentional choice. Oh, so it does now want to attack the... Hinoda Steel. Huh. But honestly, it wouldn't be very hard to kill it though. So, it does want the Hinodas. Oh, hold on. Now I've got its attention. Okay, so it's seen me, it's ignoring Hinodas, it's focused on me, both the sharks, and now they're gonna swim away. So, it's not too hard to deter them. Ugh. Unless you go that close, and obviously that's gonna happen. Cool, so there's a bit of risk. This is really cute. This is actually really adorable. I'm sure if I made it one higher, this would make more sense. You, you could build much better things than I could. But, I don't know, it's, it's the simplest things. It's the simplest things in the game that we don't already have access to. Or at least in the case of tech, it's gonna take fucking forever. Um, this is cute. I like just how it actually embeds like all the coral and such part of the house. Like, I've got like, it, it feels like uh, I'm living in a shipwreck. Oh god, I'm really living in a shipwreck. Oh no. Imagine if someone actually made like a full-on ship design on the back of Hinodus and then just lived in that. That actually sounds really, really fun. But I do believe that is the entire attraction of this guy. Hey, this would be a really, really easy way to tame sharks. This would be a hilariously easy way to tame sharks. I wonder, could I do this like Moses as well? If I built in like with stone and metal, could I like actually cheese Moses taming with this? Obviously them fleeing would be a concern, but you know, all the way up until then, before that. Or I could even make a trap. Could I make an ocean trap? Oh no. Oh no! It actually killed my Hinodus. Interesting. So I suppose it takes significantly decreased damage, but I obviously wasn't paying attention to it. Oh, so it's not quite as unstoppable as you might think. So again, it, it is early game, but it's an option. It's something to play with. Interesting. Okay, so this is just something quick and silly that I've just mashed together, and I'm sure that you could think of something much, much, much better. But here's like just a simple little gateway trap design. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be trapping Moses anytime soon, but I don't know. Maybe I can use it to trap something smaller, like like a shark. Uh, maybe a Dunkley. <laughs> I don't know. The options are there. I kind of just want to go experiment real quick. It'd also be good to know if, uh, since I did hide a little bit beneath, I didn't even bother trying ceiling, so maybe I can ceiling it. But I did cover a little bit of metal walls just to see if it would protect the Hinodus and have it take less damage. Okay, so I've taken the Hinodus to the bottom of the ocean, digging it into the sand, and now it's giving me that sweet, limited oxygen. So let's just find out then. There's nothing around here to get the attention of. Though I'm noticing that I'm getting oxygen from quite a far range of you, actually. Oh, it's actually really quite a far range to get auction from. Oh, there we go. Fireside draining. Okay. 
So let's say, <laughs> hypothetically, so G to SDF, um, done call. And say I want to get like a level 50. There you go. Oh god, I'm stuck inside it. Oh, that is bigger than I remember. Why did I go with metal? It's a Dunkley. Wait, I'm an idiot. So obviously that's not going to work. So let's try a Megalodon instead then. Just a good old classic Megalodon. Let's see if I can get you inside here. Oh no, I can't actually. I would have just, you know, put down a trap or like the other side of the gateway. I guess I'd pick that one up and then replaced it. That would work, but otherwise not really. However, let's see your HP so far. So it does in fact take damage. So it definitely wouldn't be a taming trap. Not like I could really get it big enough anyway. I couldn't really figure out a way to make it like any wider. Again, with default settings, of course. But hey, it's a good little way just to, you know, come chill in here. <laughs> get the job done. So let's see then. How much damage would you take? Oh, there we go. Maybe if I just like, for science. If I have to do science, let's get close to you then. So let's just let you hit me a couple of times. There's a 587. Right, so the notice itself does have a fairly large hitbox, so you do have to be wary of that. Although, a thought did just occur to me, since it's a berry pacetame, does it like any veggie cake? So it's currently on... Oh, I'm being hit again. <laughs> okay, well, so I'm taking a good chunk of damage. It does eat it, but it doesn't get the healing. Okay, so you'd have to be very, very careful of this. But still, though, it does make for just a fun possibility. Oh, God of a potential early game, like even just raft. This is just silly deep sea water stuff that I have no right trying to do. This is a very early game tame, so for like actual rafting, the entire point of its utility, it'd actually be really, really useful. Because again, leads do not aggro to these, so you actually could have a portable base, just like the good old dates. There is also one other feature where you can actually stack the Hinedus one above another, but I'm having a hard time putting it off. This is my third attempt now and it just bounces. So that's a little fun fact for you. If you really try, you can actually make the big pancakes stack one above another and it's quite wonderful. I've seen one of the mod authors do a very high stack and uh, let me know if you managed to break their record. That'd be really cool. But otherwise, that'd be it from me for now. That is the Hinodus from the Sunken Mod Editions, which like I said earlier, at the end of the day, have a very simple utility of being an early game raft that can dig itself into the seabed and produce oxygen, which is also handy for protecting knocked out creatures that would otherwise drown underwater but instead you can scoop your turtle beneath them and save them from drowning and you can actually save your you know to be tamed dino while it's still unconscious so that is also very handy in itself but otherwise due to the whole ability to build on the back of it and to breathe the oxygen underwater there's a lot of potential to have some very creative ideas for this and the fact that it's accessible so early game just makes it all the more fun. I do think that five minutes between each bite and the early game feeding is kind of brutal, especially when there's things like seagulls and raptors that can muck you up. But I guess at the same time, a organic raft that doesn't get attacked by leads shouldn't be too easy, so I kind of get it. Though I do like the fact that this has applications both in the early game convenience and in the late game just ridiculousness. <laughs> I really should try this out someday. I'd love to try this in the early game myself and just have like a semi-aquatic underwater base. <laughs> That'd be really fun. Thank you for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed it. And let me know if you have any creative ideas on how you do the underwater building. I'd really love to see some ideas. And otherwise, I'll see you all again next time. Cheers.